so has been, you know, we don't in the Elite League have anything, any mechanism like a salary cap or a draft to kind of make the, the playing field a, bit, a little bit level. Um, the conference system for me was the only sort of mechanism that you could get in to kind of do that. Um, do you think the Elite League has to look more? I mean, if you look back to the history of the Elite League and right back, there's only the four, apart from the four teams that we're talking about just now, obviously we, Coventry had their, their wee bit in the sun when they won, I think, four leagues, two playoffs, a couple of Challenge Cups. But outside of that, there's been nobody else has come in and done anything. Do you think they have to look a wee bit more to try to even up the playing field to keep the smaller teams interested? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, no. I mean, you know, I think... I think the way, I mean, look at Dundee. I mean, ultimately, it landed on, on me, but look at Dundee. They get, you know, to go to that playoff final for a small budget team is, is, a, is an amazing feeling. And I, that's what makes this league unique. So you do, you know, you can put two games together over 60 and, and, and do that, you know, and, and it gives you that, it puts you in that final four. You know, I think the big guys are, it's all relative though, right? Like, you know, the, you look at everybody looks at, at Sheffield and Cardiff and Nottingham. You know, these guys are, are putting out a lot of expenditure and expecting, you know, a big result. It's, it's, it's all kind of relative. Like, yeah. you know, there, there's a lot of pressure for the right reasons because they have won it. And Cardiff now are, you know, their fans, you know, they've been clicking and clicking and now they got it and now they're going to want it every year. Mm-hmm. You know, so now, now that comes with pressure and when and it's tough to be at the top and, and you know that you know the, the teams now are going to chase them in Belfast and all these guys and I you know it's, you, you have to respect the fact that when they win they win and they deserve to win you know uh, I don't know if I yeah I don't know in sport it, that's how it goes you know you, you can kind of salary cap it I guess and, and I do understand that you could, I just don't know I don't see a world how that's going to work because no, no, people no. human nature people you know people want to win <laughs> owners owners are coming from. You know, and there's ownership now coming in from Canada and everywhere else, and nobody has you know the same agenda. But I think the biggest thing you have to have, and, and there's no way to do it, is every team has to be sustainable. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just pointless, you know. Because you know, I played. I remember back in the day where there's every year there's teams going bankrupt or in and out of the league, and it, it doesn't make a great league. So your owners have to be competitive yet sustainable, and it's more important to be sustainable than it is competitive, to be honest. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but I think, you know, I think teams, I think Edinburgh did a great job this year. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you look at last year, their, their team stayed They're They're a good team. They're competitive. Yeah. They, they want to make playoffs and, and that's their NHL. They, the, they get in that eight seed. So everybody's fighting for something, you know, and when I say Brayhead isn't, isn't going to win, I just say it, it isn't as easy for Brayhead to win mm-hmm. the league as everybody thinks. And, you know, and, it's not getting easier. I think there was that one year where we, where everything went right and we were right there. And then I think the big guys got a little bigger, you know, but, and this is not a, this isn't a thing like we should be spending more. We are, we are spending good money and we're, but you know, ultimately it, it's got to be sustainable. You know, there's no point going for it and then going bankrupt, yeah. <laughs> you know, no point winning and then not being on play. So there is a, there is a fine line. And I think, I think for the next guy coming in, you, you need the fans to realize, like, yeah, you know, it, and he and I hope you do it. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's it's not quite the easy path that everybody thinks, you know. Um, and 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 it's and I'd hate to see that guy come in under pressure like that because it it, it isn't. I've been in this league a long time. I, I you know I know what's going on at the the Carters and the Sheffields and. You know, I've, I've been around for far too long. Um, you know, and, and that's the truth. But it's still a great, it's still a great program, and it, and it will eventually will get better. And maybe that new arena is the secret to unlocking that. You know, but at the same time, I agree. I, I would be af- I'd be afraid to to go in one too because I it's I love the Brayhead Arena. I love the atmosphere, and you know, even on nights where maybe you only draw two and a half, it's still an incredible atmosphere. Yeah. I need to ask you, sorry Ryan, I need to ask you, and you may not want to answer this as such, but I need to ask you a question about the events that led up to, uh, unfortunately, your, your contract not being renewed. Was I need to ask a question, was it a massive surprise? Uh, no, I, you know what, I, mean, I think, no, no, I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty competitive, I put pressure on myself to win, and, and we didn't get it done, you know, and I, 
No, you know, maybe as quick as it came. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> so, you, so, so you don't, so you don't little... read the, you don't read the evening times then, uh, <laughs> where, where the article was the playoffs are not all or nothing for Ryan Finnerty. Um, oh, I know. Yeah, I think I'm, that's a curse, isn't it? Isn't that like yeah, a, I've heard about that? Your, but yeah. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, man. I honestly like. I'm I'm ready to move on. I think uh, I think I'm tired. I, I, I guess that's the word. Is I love it here and I love everything I've done and and yeah. I get I, I get mad at my reputation. I see, but then you're just thinking one thing. Some guys chirping you on Twitter and you're like, yeah, but you know the the legacy I leave. I hope is a positive one and one that grew the organization and you know not one that oh you failed because you didn't you know you didn't win the trophy that somebody mm-hmm. said you should win every year. <laughs> You know, know. that that just doesn't, I never bought into that. But at the same time, it's kind of hard not to when you go back to back years of of getting very close. You know, um, I need to ask you, so I need to ask you in terms of the last four years, Ryan, if you if you were picking out one highlight above all else, what would you go for? I mean, it's it's easy ones. The Champions League. I just I wish they never pulled their goalie because I actually think we would have beat them anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's funny in that Champions League, and I never, I never actually, I never ever get too. I don't think, anyways. Maybe I should go back and listen to myself, but I never get too cocky as far as like we will, you know, we will win tomorrow or something yeah. like that, or you know what I mean. The old Mark Messier. After that, I was so mad after the Ingolstadt game because I actually felt that we were in that game. Remember then we went five on three for like the last three, they scored two five on three goals yeah. to beat us four one or something, but we were whatever that came in four two or whatever. But I felt like we were in that game the whole time. I felt like if we replay that game, we beat them in Ingolstadt. Mm-hmm. And then you got to do those interviews and the, and the interview had consisted of me, the, uh, the coach from Ingolstadt and like <laughs> one guy asking questions, <laughs> the, the big press thing. And I remember I was so angry. It was right after. And, uh, I'm like, Oh, no, I'm, and the coach was like, oh, you know, and kind of giving the old, like, oh, Brayhead, you know, better than we thought, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, no, we shouldn't have won. We'll beat him in Brayhead. I said that. And I was like, did I just say that? Like, we'll beat him in Brayhead. Like, you know, it's no, it's no, it's no big deal. <laughs> like, yeah, and I was like, I walked out of here, I'm like, oh, did I just say that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but then, so I was kind of happy when we did, but the Champions League was awesome. I think getting to the Champions League was nice because we, you know, we challenged for the league so much, and then didn't win it, and then we had to go into Fife and win. Uh, and I remember that game was was pretty emotional, just because we knew we were going there. You know, we knew that 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 was a that was a game that got us to the Champions League, and just the whole experience. And I, you know, taking the team from and, and for me, it's a lot of like I look back to four years ago mm-hmm. when I came in here and, and where we are. It, you know, superseded any of my you know, wildest imagination. Like we could be in three, four years, mm. that team. And you're thinking, yeah, right. Right. You know, <laughs> thinking back to all the stuff that was going on, <laughs> you know, I remember getting on the bus that they had at the time. I slapped my seat and dust came up into my eyes. I'm thinking, <laughs> this isn't going to work. So I, I, that. <laughs> started, <laughs> I, can't, I don't want to name the, I don't remember what company, but then I was like, I was, I remember phoning, I was downtown Glasgow <laughs> having a coffee and I was phoning all the bus companies trying to get price compares. So I could uh, so I could go back. So I knew I'm like, well, what do we pay for this? I'm like, oh, I'm going to go find it. And I ended up cutting Doig's, talking to the guy that owned Doig's for a while, and you know we got the numbers close enough to uh, to to make the switch. Mm-hmm. And I just remember they said, okay, well, we're contracted till the end of September, and I thought this was going to be the longest freaking month of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this old raggedy bus, and, and then uh, yeah, now we got Doig's, and you know, like I said I you know I go for a, I go for a beer with a couple of drivers every now, just just like those relationships. I mean, you know. Um, Jim, our, our bus driver, and 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 you know the the, the family that own it, and it just like you just little things like that that you just you just can't you're never going to replicate. You know, I can go yeah. coach in a hundred different teams, you're just never going to get you know the chance to to get so involved. And so in a way, yeah, I was I was fortunate enough that I was I was able to maybe come in at a time where I was able to instrument you know some change, mostly because I was the only one. Bergie and I were the only ones here. <laughs> you know, it was me, Bergie, and Andy, and Andy was on the, you know, in the office. So, yeah, we just kind of, I mean, we flew around this. We found we 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 found a we found our way around the city pretty fast, and we found in some pretty bad areas. And we learned that the hard way a couple times. And yeah, no, we were you know trying to get sponsorship and whatever. And just so I think people say always like, oh, he's a hundred miles an hour, but it was just you know. I just always wanted more. I just wanted to be, I had this vision where, you know, and, and to be honest, a vision is, 
where I thought we could be and where we are. I'm, I'm a hundred mile. We're a hundred miles ahead. Than, yeah. You know what? What I thought when we first came in here. I, I've got a confession to make to you as well. I was talking about Ingolstadt. Um, I was I was quite friendly with Tracy, who was looking after your mum and dad when they were there. And, uh, oh, so yeah. I was part of the group that was with your mum and dad that day. And it uh, was they stupidly appointed me the bus convener because the train from Munich. We were all staying in Munich. Uh, the train from Munich yeah, that's was right, off. Yeah. And we had to find <laughs> yeah, yeah. buses to get back. And I think we get back at three or four in the morning. Because <laughs> making me the bus convener when I had a few drinks and me wasn't a good idea. I had no idea where I was, where I was going. So well, that, apologizes to your mum yeah. and dad once again. But it was nice to meet I them remember, and spend yeah, some time with them. <laughs> oh, they, oh, they're like, um, they love me. And they obviously, they, they, I mean, they, they have more friends than I do here. And, you know, like, they get, yeah, they love that trip. But it, that was when my old man, he was, he was supposed to quit smoking, and he quit smoking about every two months, but he doesn't. He's like that 16-year-old kid that's out, you know, hiding cigarettes and stuff. But I think that was a trip that was the longest one because he couldn't get away from my mom to go have a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> he got stuck, and I, I think he'd walked away, and she lost him. She's like, I'm just going to leave him here. I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to leave him here. He's out smoking. I mean, he's in the middle of freaking Germany, middle of the night, smoking. I'm like, well, I don't know. What do you want me to do? I, I, what do you want me to get him? Where you go find him? I don't even know where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. But yeah, no, they they loved it here. They they actually, you know, I think they they've asked me a number of times to reach out and, and say thanks for everything. And yeah, it's been uh, like I said. I mean, Em and I, we could end up living here. You know, we we do love it here. We've no no real we're in no real hurry to to leave and go anywhere. And um, you know, and it, it's it is it, it is it's it's part of my life. Like now, I mean, I got so many friends and and so many people. And it's just been the amount of support, even since you know since it's happened, and the amount of like, yeah, I haven't got back. I feel bad. I haven't got reached out to everyone, but just the amount of people and genuine, really nice people. And you know, and it makes you think, man. Sometimes you focus on so many of the negative stuff, and you're like, there are just so many good people out there. Like, you know, and you got and you just you know some people and I've and I in that that bothered me a little bit because you does you, you see stuff and you're just like oh, whatever <laughs> you know but then you think man there's for every one of those guys there's 10 good people genuinely nice people and especially here we we've 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 loved our time here and um yeah it's it's, it's tough to leave it is going to be tough but at the same time like i just wanted to i i want to keep going because it's you know some people leave and they just want everything to crumble and fall and that's the opposite i i do want it to thrive and i want it to win and I mean, I didn't mean that you're not going to win. I just want to get a little bit of realism in, in, yeah. as to maybe where we are. Did you, did you uh, feel you were on a victim of that second season when we came so close that that raised the expectations too high for a lot of people? I felt the pressure, yeah. I definitely felt the pressure. I think in our in our room we felt the pressure, you know, to to, <laughs> to replicate and um, and, to, and to, to kind of raise up to that, you know, and I, and I get it. I mean, we won, you know, one point off, five points off, and but I think – it's just it is it is tough to get back, you know, and I, and whether whether the big boys have grown a bit more, mm-hmm. and you know, or or we've gone, uh, you know, this year we went back, but I mean, it's mm-hmm. sports, it just happens, it, yeah. it like it just it it does happen. I mean, I don't, you know, it happens to everyone. I mean, you follow your favorite NHL team, like the Boston Bruins, you know, they win the Stanley Cup one year and then they can't get into playoffs next year. The LA Kings, you know, <laughs> it just. It does happen, I think, but I don't. But they'll re- they'll they'll rebound. I think next year will be a good year for him. I think even just a new coach with new, you know, like you said, I, I think it brings new life in and and you know guys that maybe like Haywood and Barry, you know, and, and these guys are, are, you know, now they have to prove themselves. They get an opportunity to to do it, and it's it's, it's exciting for players. It's nerve wracking, but exciting as well because you know you want to get out and show what you can do, and it's you know, and I think that that's going to be a good thing. Um, but it's just yeah, there's a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work when you when you get here. But I'm hoping that they're they're you know hopefully a bit more dialed in and you know and, and take on board. I think it's just you make it great for your players, and, and that's you know it doesn't cost you any more money. And that that's my biggest advice: is make it a great players, treat them well, give them give them good housing, you know, um, and 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 it it kind of goes from there. If you don't, then you put them into bad housing. It's oh, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for everyone. I think it's uh, fair to say you had some disagreements with some Fife fans over the years, being so close to the bench behind you, but would it surprise you to know that I had a wee look on the forum today, 
and quite a lot of them are saying they would really love you to go up and coach there. Is that a surprise to you? Nah. <laughs> I'm not falling for that. That's a plan to get me into the kingdom and I'll never come out again. <laughs> <laughs> After I've had spitting some so much material, material though, <laughs> now some of them want I've had you. some pretty serious hate mail uh, that would contradict that.